Uh, Shalom, first and foremost, giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kudash, double honors to the apostle and elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. The names I just said, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is the true name uh, of the Heavenly Father and Son, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and those are the names that will be called upon in these last days for salvation. And the topic of this video is going to be on you women, especially for you women, because you women are going to need a man that knows them, those names, that the Lord's willing is, a, is a, a man of the Lord and he's of the elect. You're going to need a man that knows those names to be delivered in these times, because the topic is going to be today on you women. Because you women, like scripture say, rise up, ye careless daughters, rise up, ye women that are at ease. You women are at ease. Now, you women don't like hearing these things because you feel like we're aggressive, that we're attacking you, that we're men haters. But we only saying this because we're, commissioned, we're sent out by the Heavenly Father <coughs> through His Son to warn you and give you warning. Ezekiel 3 and 17. We're not just here warning the other nations and warning uh, you know, Esau, Edom, and uh, the men of our nation. But we're also here to warn you women as well. And you women don't like the warning, but you need to hear it because... Very soon in these last days, you're going to be living these things. You're going to be seeing these things. And what am I talking about? Matter of fact, just to back up that point that I just made. And then we'll go from here. This is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir, which is what? He's going to make the heavenly father through his son, Yahweh Shai, is going to make the Israelite man, the elect of the nation of Israel, precious. Why? Because when hard times come upon this world, you're going to need a man. None of this single ladies nonsense, none of this independent and I don't need a man, none of that. You're going to need a man for the in these last days, especially a man that knows his truth and Lord's will, he's of the elect. You can't go uh, about uh, living your life thinking that you don't need a man. Because look at it, spiritually, the Israelite man is looked at as the Lord's woman. Now, a man is not an actual woman, obviously, but spiritually, we're looked at as the Lord's woman and the Heavenly Father is our husband. So if we need our husband, how much more do you women uh, need us, especially in these times? Because we're going to need the Lord to be defended, and you're going to need us to be defended. Because if the Lord's defending us, the Lord's willing to have mercy, he'll defend you as well. So you're going to see how important it is. And Lord's when I find that precept as well. I just remember that precept in, Tim, uh, in Timothy. She shall be saved in childbearing. I didn't write that down, but I just remember that. That you women are going to need a man. You're going to need a hedge, which a man is, uh, is your hedge, your protection. Especially uh, a man that knows his truth and a man that's Lord's willing. He's of the hopeful elect or he's of the elect. So I tried to find out some information on this post that I found on, uh, on Instagram. I have two things here that I want to show off of Instagram. This, and then there's a video that I also want to play as well. Lord's willing, you can hear it. But if anything, you could probably do your own research and find it on your own if you have Instagram or whatever. But um, going into this, I tried to find out some research about this. I wasn't seeing anything. But let's just play, you know, devil's advocate or whatever. Or let's just assume that this story is really going on out there, right? Now, it says here in this post... <clears throat> At first, I was hesitant about making this post, but I know bringing awareness to the problem can bring change. Recently, I was approached by two young girls in Clinton asking for help. After giving them money, they gave me a rose in return. I insisted that I did not want the rose, and she still slid it through the window. They later came back to my car to check on me. Ironically, something told me to look at the rose, and it was filled with a powder substance. It has, been it has been confirmed in similar situations in the area that it was possibly fentanyl in the rows. They have been putting drugs in flowers waiting for them to sniff the substance. And once they pass out, uh, and once they, pass out uh, they take them for sex trafficking. The girls were waiting for me to sniff the rows and inhale the substance in the rows. Sex trafficking is real and it is happening in Clinton, MS. I'm not sure if that's Mississippi... I'm not too sure where that's at. I let my guard down and, it's poss and, and it possibly could have affected me for the rest of my life. Please be aware of your surroundings and be careful. They use roses as a symbol for sex trafficking. And as you can see right there, that's the picture of the rose right there. And possibly that's the fentanyl on top of it. So 
tried, like I said, I tried to find out some information to see if that was real. Couldn't really find anything, but this is why, like the scriptures say, matter of fact, let's go to it. I'll just let the scriptures speak and then let the spirit speak and flow. But this is why a man uh, shall be uh, valuable in these last days, because you're going to need a man for protection from these uh, things that are coming. Because obviously it sounds like this woman was by herself that I'm not going to sit there and say if she didn't have a man or not, but whether she has a man or not, or maybe her man wasn't there, you're going to want a man to be around you because you're living in a world, ladies, where you're the target. You're the prey. You're not the predator. You know, you listen to women like Beyonce tell you these single ladies things and you don't need a man and you think that you're the boss chick and all that. Like it goes back to the book of Genesis. The woman's desire shall be to her husband. The woman was made for the man, not the woman, uh, not the man for the woman. I'll say it again. A woman was made for a man, not a man for a woman. And that's why I said, and like I said uh, in Genesis third chapter, that her desire shall be to husband, meaning that you're going, your desire, your will, your your wants are going to be to please your man and to make your man help happy, meaning a helpmeet. And that's what a woman is supposed to do. You have a very simple job, ladies. It's very easy. I mean, it can be hard and difficult, obviously, if you have children and things like that, to cook, clean, make sure that you're in shape, make sure that you're, uh, you're doing things for your man. It's not easy, but you really do have a, a more simpler uh, a job than us, where we have to go out there and battle the elements and battle other people. Whereas you, you get to stay at home with the kids. Now, again, that's not easy. Being a mother, especially a stay-at-home mother, that's a job within itself. But it's a lot easier than going out there having to deal with the elements and deal with people and things like that. But this is Isaiah 32 and 2. And a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. Now, what is the wind? The wind, the wind represents what? Hard times. The, uh, the hard times coming upon this world. Because what does a strong wind do? Like a tornado or something. It comes in, takes you and flings you somewhere. But what it says, a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. And a covert from the tempest, as the rivers of water in a dry land. I'm sorry, sorry, as the as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary in a weary land. So a man, especially a, specifically an Israelite man, is going to be something that's sought up, sought after. An Israelite man, a man that believes in his faith, is going to be something that you're going to be looking for, for stability, for help in these times. You're not going to just be looking out for what you see like today. All your futures and all that. No, you're going to be looking for a man that's stable, a man that understands what's going on, a man that, you know, has his head on straight and that he's not losing his mind. Because like it says, let's go real quick to uh, Jeremiah 30 and 5. Jeremiah 30 and 5. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear and not of peace, because again, Hard times is coming, not just upon the world, but specifically, I mean, not just upon America, but here in the uh, or, or the whole world, but specifically it's going to hit here in America the hardest. So I'll read that again. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. So the things that your day-to-day -day lives is soon going to change. It's not going to be peaceful all, all the time. And things are slowly but surely, if you pay attention uh, mostly speaking to you, men. I've, a few of you sisters, if you do pay attention, cool. But mostly that's for the men to, you know, prophesy and to be aware of these things. But you do make your women know what's up as well. Right? It says, verse 6, Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? All the faces are turned into paleness. So even men in these last days are going to be afraid. But what a man that believes in the heavenly father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, like it says in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Why is wisdom and knowledge going to be the stability of your time? Because you're going to, men, the, the men that believe in this truth, are going to, what, they're going to have the proper understanding of the scriptures. Like it says in uh, Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning. That uh, through patience and comfort we may have uh, we may have hope. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture, Romans 15 and 4. Why? Because we know about the times that the Lord has always pulled through for His people, always defending His people. When when uh, when you stand for the Lord, when you're good with the Lord, when you're righteous in the eyes of the Lord, the Lord will take care of you. He'll, uh, he'll make sure that you're good and make sure that your seed is good. Da King David talked about that. He said, "What I have been young and I have been old, nor have I never seen the righteous or his seed begging for bread." <clears throat> roughly paraphrasing that scripture 
So when you're good with, when you're righteous in the eyes of the Lord, when you're good with the Lord, the Lord will make sure that you're good. He'll take care of you. Like it says, and he had care for his elect. And if you have a woman with you, you know, Lord's willing, she be of the elect lady. He'll also take care of her as well. Because he knows that you love her and that's your woman and things like that. And, you know, you're elect man, she's elect lady. You know, it's destined for you to make it out of it. But even men in these last days are going to be scared. So how much more are you women? And like I said earlier, what? The man is your protection. He's your hedge. So if you have men out here today, I mean, men are here today that in these last days are going to be scared as shit. How much more are you women? Let's see that independent uh, and that boss status and all, I'm that bitch and all that type of talk. Let's see if that's going to help you in these last days. If that type of talk, if that type of energy is going to help you get through Jacob's trouble. And this is another post. Now it says, as you can see, false information. They're always saying that. But this is another post that I found. And I'm going to play this and get, uh, bring out some more precepts. I don't care if you agree with a lot of my videos or not, or if you pay attention to them, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But I definitely want you to pay attention to this one. My daughter works late. She gets off at 3 in the morning in a decent-sized city. We live in the middle of nowhere out in the country. So we're not accustomed to seeing stuff like this. But like I said, she works in a big city. She gets off at 3 in the morning, drives an hour, hour and 15 minutes to get home. This is the third morning in a row. I found one of these on her car in the exact same spot, back passenger door. I didn't know what it was. I just kept cutting it off. This morning when I found it, I went in there and I asked her, I said, what's the deal with the zip tie being on your back passenger handle every morning for the past three mornings? I've cut it off. She said, Dad, I don't know what in the world you're talking about. She said, I, I didn't know there was a zip tie on there. I said, yeah, there's a zip tie. So I was talking to my brother just a few minutes ago, and I told him, I said, man, three mornings in a row, I found a zip tie on, my, on I ain't going to say her name, but my daughter's back passenger door handle, black zip tie. It's loose, but it's on there. And he works in law enforcement. He's been in law enforcement his whole life. And you could tell when I mentioned that, he got extremely silent. And he said, what would you just say? And I told him, and he was like, listen, man, cut that off right now. I said, I have been cutting them off. He was like, sex traffickers and people that basically steal women, vulnerable women, put them on a car somewhere where it's not easily noticeable for them, but other people who actually do the stealing knows exactly what that means. So basically what this is, you all, is this is a tag. And this alerts anyone who's part of the organization, I'll call it, of sex trafficking, or kidnappers, abductors, let them know that that person is vulnerable, they are by themselves, and they're an easy target. So if you've got teenage kids, girls, that are out late at night, that are driving, check their car every morning look for a black zip tie or anything that stands out and immediately remove it. Looks like my daughter is a target, so she will be prepared. I promise you that. I've been telling y'all to keep your six covered. It's real. Alright, and that's that on that uh, video. But as you can see, yeah, this is why we tell you women that you need to stop being out there all open and dressing however you feel like it or just being out there all the time. Because why do we say these things? We're not saying this as you women like to sit there and say we're controlling and things like that. And, oh, you don't want me to have any fun because you have to understand the world that you're living in and the time that you're living in. You are a target. And when you dress a certain way and you dress promiscuous and things like that, you don't know who's out there watching. And this is not the first time that I've actually heard of this story. I've actually heard of the story a couple of times about that, about that black zip tie. 
When you women go out there, you don't know who the hell is watching you from what car, from what corner. You don't know who is out there and what they may be thinking. And you women always out want to be out in the clubs or wherever, especially with this, this you know, this, uh, I'm going to just take what Elder Yashwama calls it, the jungle bumps, you know, and if you know what the jungle bumps are, then the new thing that's, uh, you know, prevalent out there in the world. And you women want to be out there talking to all types of men. You don't know what these men are like. You don't know what these men' intentions are. You see that all the time. You have the Jeffrey Dahmers, all these crazy-ass guys that seem sane. But then later on, they turn out to be a psychopath. And then what? You have the documentaries. They seem all nice. They seem all cool. But then what? Next thing you know, they take you to some, uh, you know, back of the woods somewhere and chop you into 100 pieces. And put you in some trunk and bury you somewhere in the back of the woods. We're not saying this because we're haters. We're not saying this. We're saying this. This is actually love. We're Because if we didn't warn you women about this type of stuff, you could sit there and say that we hate you. But us warning you, this is love because we, didn't want, we wouldn't want you to get chopped up into pieces. We wouldn't want anything to happen to you. This is why we tell you to dress, mo like this, well, not us, but the scriptures say dress modestly. Now, yeah, like Apostle Ramlab did a, v a video recently. Uh, I believe he called it the Queen of Heaven. Now, look, you do have some women that have some curves and have a body on them that's hard. Even if you were to wear a modest apparel, you can still see the curves and everything. But at least somewhat try to dress modestly. But when you dress all anyhow and things like that, you make yourself a target. And you also make your man a target as well. Because you know what? Let's say you do have a man. They're going to sit there and say, hey, look, you see that woman? We want her. But that man's in the way. So you know what? Let's kill the man. Let's get him out of the way. So that way we can uh, take her and we can have a way with her. And we can do whatever we want with her. Now, yes, could that still happen if you, even if you dress modestly? But that's less of a chance. Because like Elder Tazar in one of my camp always says, what? Clothes bring a vibration. You women sit there and say that, oh, I don't want men to think that I'm a slut. Or they don't, they, you know, or I don't want them to look or think a way about me. But even uh, Dave Chappelle said, I forgot how he said the joke, but. I think he said along the lines of, um, was it Dave Chappelle? I think it was Dave Chappelle. He said the joke along the lines of how, uh, you know, what if I was to be in a cop uniform and someone was to say, officer, officer, we need your help. He said, hey, I'm not an officer. The people say, well, why are you in the cops, uh, in, you know, in an officer's uniform then? Just because I, I'm in an officer's uniform doesn't mean I'm a cop. So it's the same thing. If you can't dress like a harlot or a whore, but then sit there and say, oh, I'm not a harlot or whore. So why are you dressing like one? <clears throat> and again, we're not saying these things to, uh, to, uh, because we're women haters or we hate you and things like that. We're saying this because we care. We don't want to see anything happen to you. And you're living in an evil world that you, like I said earlier, you are the prey. And these men will seek after you and will do things to you. They even put that in movies. Uh, there was one movie in particular I watched a little... Uh, couple of months ago gothica with Halle berry i always seen that movie on netflix and you know i was always interested in watching but i never took the time out to watch it until i recently watched it and you know the movie was about uh basically Halle berry had a husband or whatever and they was taking women to some neck of the woods somewhere in some abandoned house and doing whatever they want with them these things happen these things are they have documentaries about them these things actually happen I had a situation that happened in my building, I want to say sometime last year, maybe like November, December, where a young lady got raped in my building. Why? Because she was always downstairs, always just about. These things actually happen. You women act like these things don't happen. And when we tell you about these things, you get angry, you get pissed off. It's, uh, don't tell me about this. Stop trying to stop me from having fun. But these things actually happen. You walk around and act like you can't get taken up. Here it is. I just showed you a video on Lord's One. It was clear enough for you to hear. This man has a daughter. And what? You have the black zip tie. His daughter is now a target. And he said it happened three times, which means every time they cut it off, that means that, like he said, his daughter is a target. That means that they're watching that daughter intently to get her. Means that if that will happen again, that means they'll put that zip tie back again. And keeps trying to come after her. And waiting. That means that they're probably intently looking to see when they have a chance to snatch her up. 
This is not a game, man. Life, you can't, you women can't live in fairy tale la la land where everything's just fun and like the scriptures say, she that liveth in the pleasure is dead while she liveth. Not everything is a game. Not everything is all fun and drinks and parties and all that. You're not, you're, I gotta let the scriptures speak. Uh, I apologize for uh, going off on a tangent like that. But these things must be said to you, women, man. But you women don't like hearing these things. <clears throat> this is Ephesians 5, and I'll start at verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Hamashiach shall give thee light. Which, when it says, uh, awake, thou, awake thou that sleepeth, meaning... You're no longer in a in a dead state of mind, like the scriptures say. He that uh, wandered out of the uh, matter of fact, let me get that scripture. But it's Proverbs twenty one, is it? Okay, here it is. Proverbs twenty one and sixteen: The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Now that means that doesn't mean that you're actually dead, but you're dead from the neck up, meaning that you're spiritually dead. You don't know what's going on. You don't know the names of the Heavenly Father. You don't know the times that you're living in right now, like it's going to say. So it says, Where, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepeth, meaning, you know, no longer be in that dead state of mind. Know what's going on. Know what you're supposed to do. It says, and arise from the dead. And Hamashiach, which is Yahweh Shai, shall give thee light, which is, means that he shall give you the wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Verse 15, see then that thou works, uh, sorry, see then that thou walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Now, this doesn't just apply for us men, but as for you women as well. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What does circ uh, circumspectly mean? To, uh, to look around. Look at your surroundings. Look at how the world is going on right now. There's a lot, if you pay attention, if you read, uh, uh, news articles and things like that there's a lot more uh, attacks on women where men are just randomly attacking women you can't just like it says uh ye careless daughters i'm gonna go back to that scripture in isaiah 32 ye careless daughters now i'm gonna get what that word careless means in the blue letter as well just being all wanton just thinking that life is just uh, fun and, uh, and just this and drinks and party and good times now there's nothing wrong with having a drink there's nothing wrong with having good times but you got to understand, again, you women are the prey and the men out there with those messed up minds are the predator. And in these last days, when lawlessness goes on, goes, uh, happens in the world, these men that you dress all promiscuous for, that you dress all half-assed for and you show your bodies out there, these men are going to come looking for you in these last days. Why? Because they've always had their eye on you. They've always wanted you. They've always uh, sought you out but what you turned them down or you didn't give them any play or they may have been nervous when well, that day they're not going to be nervous and they're going to take what they want it says verse 16 redeeming the time because the days are evil we're living in evil days verse 17 wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is and be not drunk with wine which is the philosophies the ways of this world wherein is excess but be filled with the spirit which is the wisdom knowledge understanding i'll read that again for you women that obviously us men as well but you women as well verse 18 and be not drunk with wine the ways of this trying to just live it up live it up live it up again there's nothing wrong with having your fun enjoying yourself but this this constant in trying to just go here go there go there you're just you're just making yourself a target and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Now, going back to that point I made earlier about men are going to uh, take women, it speaks about that in the scriptures. This is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 16. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Now, when you go into that word ravish, it means to rape. So men's wives are going to get raped out here unless that man is a man of the Lord and that, that household is protected. But if you women are by yourselves, where is your hedge? Where is your protection? Where is, you know, as you've always said, you don't need a man. And look, you may have a gun. You may have this or all that. But you have to understand. 
there's but so much bullets there's but so much guns there's but so much this you're going to need just like us men divine intervention from the heavenly father you're going to need a just like us men we're going to need divine intervention from these uh from these troubles sometimes you women are going to need men to help you and pretty much save you from these hard times that's coming upon the world that's coming upon the earth you're, there's but so much guns there's but so much this there's but so much that There's, there's so many eyes out there on you women when you women just go out there and dress however you want and think it's okay. It's not okay. The scriptures speak about, again, dress, dressing modestly to the best of your ability because we know that you women are going to be hard headed. You're not going to listen. But if you at least try, there's nothing wrong with trying, baby girl. For God's sakes, try. It's, it's literally your own life. Do you not care about yourself? You, you want to live, right? But it's like you women, just like the scripture say, you're careless. You don't care. And I've been saying that scripture for a while now, so let's go into it. Now, I apologize for the rambling, but it's like, come on, man. Have a working brain up there. Like, you women are not stupid. You women know what men like. You know we like to see the curves. We like to see the, the titties, the ass. We like to see all these things. And when you show it out there, you're just showing us... That's all that you're about. Cover up. My God. You know, I've seen it on Instagram a couple of times where some guys have said, like, yo, you women have made seeing ass and titties boring. Because every time, summertime, kind of the ass and titties, ass and titties, ass and titties. Some dudes have said on Instagram, it's boring now. It's like, I don't want to see it no more. It's played out. <clears throat> this is Isaiah chapter 32 verse 9 It says rise up Sorry Rise up ye women that are at ease Hear my voice ye careless daughters Give ear unto my speech Many days and years shall ye be troubled Ye careless women For the vintage shall fail And the gathering shall not come Right These benefits that ye women have Especially for you single, uh, single women Because the so-called white man Esau Edom has given you these benefits to where so long as you don't have a man, there's no father in the house, you know, you've kicked him out, you'll get these benefits. Well, those benefits are going to fail. Like it says, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. These, bl uh, these blessings that the so-called white man has given to you, they're going to be taken away. <coughs> right? And like I said, uh, when you go to that word, I believe it's careless. Let's go into that real quick. Oh, blue letter, you better. Okay, cool. I was going to say blue letter, you better not act up. Now, the Hebrew word there for uh, careless is batach. Hopefully, I'm saying that word right. I'll say it again. Batach. And it says to trust, to trust in, to have confidence, be confident. But how, why, how and why are you women confident? Because society, regardless if you believe it or not, caters to you women. It does. It really does. Now, Lord is one that could be a topic for another video. You know, I'll probably do some research and go into that. But society caters to you women. It makes things easier for you women. So this is why you trust in it. This is why you have confidence. This is why, like it says, to be bold, secure, to feel safe, to be killed. Because when you feel safe, you see, when you when you're not, when you don't feel safe, you're more prudent. You're more watchful of the things that you do. You're more you know, uh, like I said, prudent to, uh, to be careful of the things that you do because you, you're not as secure as you uh, think you are. So you're going to be more watchful for what you say, what you do, how you act and how you move. But when you feel completely secure, you can be careless. You can just do whatever you want. And that's how society, that's how the so-called white man has made society for you women. He's made it in the way that you can be careless to where you think you can talk to a man however you want and you could just call up 911 and what or you'll just have some man out there say hey you can't hit the woman like that you can't do that but in these last days when you can't call 911 when you can't just uh do whatever you want or talk to men however you want because in these last days men are not going to have uh, are not going to allow you women to just talk however you want to them they're going to hit you in the face and there's been things that come out like that brothers have done videos on that where a dude just stone cold just decks a woman right there in her face for just talking to him like that But this society has made it, again, 
to where you feel at ease, you have confidence, you think you could just go up to a man's face and you have no respect at all, no home training, no upbringing to where you could just go in a man's face, yeah, fuck you, nigga, shut the fuck up. And he just sits there because why? Because the man doesn't want that problem because he knows that, what, 911. And obviously it's, you know, wisdom as well. It's like, why am I going to get into this problem with the woman and bring issues upon myself, the police and all that? So, you know, I'll just, you know, it's the best thing to do, brothers, is just to walk away when a woman comes up into your face. That's why a woman has that confidence to do that because she knows, I'm going to call 911. But if you have respect and know that this man can knock me out, let me not, you know, talk to him this way. And just for your upbringing as well, because did you not your father and mother teach you things? Let me not talk to this man anyway. Let me not talk to my husband anyhow as well. Let me talk to him like I have some sense. Let me talk to him like a woman and not a child because that's how kids act. <laughs> so going back, verse 11, Isaiah chapter 32, verse 11. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. Now, sackcloth is a mourning, uh, is a mourning uh, garment that you would put on, because you women are going to be in mourning very soon, especially for you women that you know you had your mouth where you sit there and say, "I don't need a man, I don't need this and that." Well, the heavenly Father is going to check. Okay, so seeing as how you said you don't need a man, you don't want a man, you are the table, you bring everything. Okay, fine. Let's see what you bring to the table for Jacob's trouble. Let's see you get through Jacob's trouble without a man seeing as how you say you're bringing the table and, and everything on it let's see then when Jacob's trouble happened let's see where that single ladies and this trapping a nigga and treating a guy like the so-called black man like he's shit let's see where that gets you in Jacob's trouble because a lot of these men are going to turn you down when you treated them like shit looked upon them like they weren't nothing you see, right now, you women have the upper hand where you can look at men like they ain't nothing. Treat them like they ain't nothing. And, you know, I was talking to someone, and she found it very surprising. Like, what? You, yes, because there are women out there that, there are a, a lot of women that pretty much have that fuck niggas mentality because you watch Cardi B, because you listen to these women out there. But yet, these women have men. Screw men. Forget men. You don't need them, but they have men. Funny. Very funny. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can find that precept. And I apologize for the long rambling, but I pray that it was all edification came out. But uh, let me see if I can find this precept that she shall be saved in childbearing. Give me one second, please. Let me see if I think it. No, first two and fifteen. I thought it was three. <laughs> this is First Timothy, the book of First Timothy, chapter two, verse fifteen. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Now, what does it mean being saved in childbearing? How does a woman, uh, not meaning that uh, you have a child that you're just going to be saved, but what? A woman bears a child for a man. So a woman is going to be saved through her man. <laughs> or a man of the Lord, specifically, not just any man, but a man that believes in his face, a, a man that's of the elect. So... I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I had more precepts, but the Spirit is telling me, you know, to end it there. But, yeah, like the Scripture said, I'll just read this one more, one last time and, you know, just give my last thoughts. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Give, uh, hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Right. And how you give ear unto the Heavenly Father's speech? By listening to the prophets, listening to the men of the Lord out there on the highways and byways. We're not telling you anything that's bad, ladies. I just gave you ample proof. There's two things right there. The one with the flower and the other man that had the video of the, the zip tie that was on his daughter's uh, car. Again, you women that sit there and say you don't me need men, you're going to see very soon why you need a man. The so-called black man that has been torn down, that has been treated like shit, that 
you know, the, the so-called black man can be everything in the world but a good man, a, be a righteous man, you're going to see so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians stand up on their feet calling upon the names of the Lord, and they're going to be delivered. And you're going to see uh, how the Lord is going to glorify his men. And you're going to see exactly why you needed the men, a man. And you shouldn't have listened to the bullshit that the so-called white man put out here with all this fem feminist nonsense and all that about how you don't need a man and you could do whatever a man does. You can't. And it's time you women grow up and stop living in this fairy tale world. Stop living in your mind and start coming to reality. Get out of the matrix. Because when you anal analyze a man and woman, we're not the same. And you can't do what we can do. I know there's that song. Uh, I don't know when that song came out, but it came out years ago. Uh, anything you can do, I can do better, uh, something like that. You can't do anything that a man does. If you, if you were, then you would be a man. And the Lord would have made you to be a man. The same way us as men need to know our place with the Lord, you women need to know your place with a man. And it's just about having respect. Relationships can be a very easy thing. The, the relationships are supposed to be a beautiful thing. It's supposed to be a beautiful thing between a man and a woman. The love that a man and woman have for each other, the, the child that comes out of it, it can be all easy. And now, obviously, it's never going to be perfect here in Babylon, but it can be simple. It can be easy to, to a degree. But what you women just live in a fairy tale world where it's just all this extraness for no reason. Relationships can be very easy and very simple, man. Stop looking to everybody else and what everybody else is doing. A lot of people's relationships that you see on Instagram, Facebook, whatever have you, is not real. It's all fake. It's all bullshit. A lot of times I was actually in one of those relationships. I'll speak for myself that, yeah, it may have looked nice on Instagram, but it was hell. It wasn't good. I wasn't in a good place, and I probably wasn't treating the person just being real as well as I should have. And I wasn't getting the love that I needed to receive as well. But what you'll see on Instagram, all smiles and it looks good, but it's really not. For you single ladies out there, those of you that you know you think you're a strong, independent, single mother, you're not. You're going to need a man. For you women out there that are single just in general, that don't have no kids and are single, don't have a man, you're going to need a man. That's how the Lord set it up. Not my words. It's the Heavenly Father. It's his, his system, man. But I'll end off the rant and rambling. Pray this was, I pray that this uh, warning exhorts you women to, like it says, rise up, you women that are at ease. Stop being in this dumb mindset, man. Stop living in this fairy tale world that you live in, man. Get out of your head. Get out of your emotions and your feelings and get back and get into reality, man. A man that, a rep, uh, a man that rebukes you and that he's harsh on you sometimes is what maybe quote unquote mean. He's only doing that out of love. A man that doesn't give a damn about you, he's just going to let you do whatever. That's a man that doesn't love you. A man that lets you just do whatever and roam the streets and have your, have your own way and do whatever you want. That's a man that don't give a fuck about you. Because when something happens to you, he's going to like, I don't give a fuck. But a man that does care about you is going to watch over. He's going to make sure that you're good. And he's going to make sure that you don't do anything stupid out there. Why? Because he gives a fuck about you. Because he truly loves you. That's the difference. But here in this world, it's backwards, where if you try to control what they say, control a woman and stop her from doing whatever she wants, you hate her. You're, tr you're controlling. You're a bad guy. But if you just let her do whatever she wants, you love her. This is why this world needs to be renovated, man. This is why this world, the change is needed. This is why Yahweh Shai needs to come back. That's backwards, man. That's foolishness. But here in this world, people... It, it's, this, this, this place just needs to go. There's no words. This place just needs to be wiped off the map. And we just need that kainos refreshing where things are set in its proper order that the Lord always wanted to be. And that's when people are going to see that uh, the Heavenly Father's ways is the righteous ways and it's the best ways. And that's how a man and woman is supposed to act. And that's how a man and woman is supposed to live. Only then when this place is taken off, when Esau Edom is taken out of power, that's when people are going to see the, the ways of the Lord that was, he was, the ways of the Lord was always correct. But again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash, Shalom.